Hi, welcome back to another video. Next to me you can see the ASUS C790 formula, which is the successor of the C690 formula. And if you follow this channel and probably also the hardware news, you might have noticed that earlier this year the C690 was recalled because it has problems with corrosion on the VRM cooling. Both C690 and C790 have a hybrid cooling solution that allows to use passive air cooling as any other mainboard or also actively include it into your water cooling loop. And the C690 had some problems with corrosion, which eventually led to a recall of the motherboard. And I just want to check, and that's why I bought it for 800 euro, it's actually a quite expensive motherboard, but I want to check if Asus actually did their job and fixing this on the C790. Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe with hundreds of thousands of servers in operation. By combining its strengths in innovative technology, attractive prices, expert customer service, Hetzner expanded its marketing growth within and outside Europe. They operate their very own high-tech data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein, both located in Germany and in Helsinki, Finland. Hetzner not only provides high-performance cloud servers at an affordable price, but also incredibly powerful dedicated servers capable of handling any project. Aside from these products, you can also get high-quality storage products and a variety of other services. Click on the link below and check out Hetzner's portfolio. Already end of last year, people reported online that they had corrosion occurring inside their custom water cooling loops after using the C690 formula. And first, it was not even clear where the corrosion came from. So you can find this inside your CPU block and GPU water block, sometimes in the pump, that you have like small particles basically blocking your loop. Then people took apart their loops and they found inside the VRM cooling blocks weird particles and clear signs of corrosion. And after deeper investigation, some people figured out that ASUS was actually using aluminum blocks that were like copper coated. I'm not even sure technically how you would do that, but it seemed like this was the solution ASUS came up with. Then there's also this weird part that if you look at the C690 formula, that there is an EK Waterblocks logo on it. Then first, if you look at the cooler, it's kind of clear that it's not really made by EK because it looks completely different to what they usually do. It looks a little bit more like an air cooler, so you have those fins and you just run water through. So that's already kind of odd. And after talking to a friend a while ago about this entire topic, he also told me, and I'm not sure if this is like really confirmed or just a rumor, that this was just like an EK co-branded product, but the cooler was actually not made by EK. Maybe that was part of why things went wrong. And yeah, I mean, mixing materials inside water cooling loops, it's kind of well known that this usually doesn't really work out. So in the end, as I said before, ASUS had to recall the motherboard and replace the heatsink. And with all that in mind, here we have the C790 formula sitting inside the box. First of all, I mean, it's a beautiful looking motherboard. If you're looking for like a white build and want to include it into your custom water cooling loop, that's probably the motherboard of choice. I mean, it's very similar to the C790 Hero. So very good components, very good BIOS. And yeah, overall, probably a good and solid board. But we want to focus on the cooling solution. That's why I will also take it apart in a second. And the first thing I noticed is the EK logo is actually missing. So it seems like there is no more EK cooperation for this motherboard. And I would assume this is just like purely my theory. There is no like, yeah, confirmed information about this, but I would assume that if things are true and the prior board, the C690 was actually not made by EK, then I would assume it would just hurt their reputation to have things like this. And then they maybe said, yeah, for C790, we would not do the same thing again. But yeah, not sure about that. Already halfway through, remove the back plate, also the major components on the front. And here we have the VRM heatsink. And we already tested this with C690 because if you look at this, it's mainly made for water cooling because it doesn't really have a ton of surface area. So you would assume that air cooling might not work as well. But we tested this with the C690 and it worked surprisingly well which is mainly because I think the VRM is just very efficient and thus the, yeah, the heat generated is just not that much. Now this thing consists of several different components. First of all, we have the case. Not quite sure what kind of material it is. It doesn't really feel like plastic. It's probably, I don't know, could be zinc or something and then painted. That's something we will find out. I mean, we have tools to analyze the exact material that is used. Then we have this plate on top and then there is another plate 
where it's screwed to. So like several parts. And also, if we take a look inside, you can also already see some fins looking through. So that's the VRM heatsink after taking it off from the motherboard. You can clearly see that is the contact area for the inductors, also the power stages. And this way you can also see that it's basically three different layers. So the bottom layer that makes contact with the heat components, then there is one additional layer in between, and then basically the case and what sits inside. Here we have the case. I'm not quite sure what material this is. Kind of, I mean, it looks like plastic, but it doesn't feel like plastic. Not quite sure. That's the heatsink. Already not looking forward to putting the O-ring back in. I mean, it's not really an O-ring. It's just a, yeah, a gasket. And yeah, those will be the materials we have to determine to find out what it is. I still think it's a quite odd like design for a water cooling block. I mean, just, just use copper and have a few grooves in it and that should do the job. First of all, we're looking at the material of the contact area that is making direct contact with the thermal pads. That's under the microscope, 20 times magnified. You can see all those grooves from the milling process. And we're now changing to the material analysis unit. So that is the same thing, just 300 times magnified. Those are still the grooves from the milling. And on top we have some kind of coating. It's probably nickel coating. And that's what we want to analyze. So the top layer is definitely nickel. We can see 100% nickel coating but we will now use our laser to etch through the layer and see what we can find underneath. I repeated the test 10 times, so basically we have a laser shooting onto the surface, etching away some of the material, and then we can find this. So the first step was still 100% nickel, then it was a mixture out of nickel and aluminium, and after that it was just purely aluminium with a little bit of oxide, so yeah. That is basically nickel coated aluminium. So again, that was the area we were looking at. That's where usually a thermal pad is placed, making contact with uh, the power stages. And that's also okay because this entire material would not have contact with the water. So next up, we will repeat the same testing in this area. That's this area underneath the microscope, 300 times magnified, and we will repeat the multi-layer analysis. Quite interesting. So I repeated the test 10 times. It's definitely taking away some material, but it's still nickel. So very, very strong nickel layer. There you can also see it on the images. So that was prior to using the laser on the material and then like all the way down to trial number 10. There we can see a hole that we created and that's what we can find also in here. I'm just using a file to yeah, like rough one of the edges to see if we can get through the layer quicker. It's a little bit uh, difficult to get the focus on there right, but we can see that is basically the edge. And I think that is a quite thick nickel layer. And then underneath we have something that shines a little bit red. So yeah, that should be copper. I'm trying to put the focus or like the, yeah, the laser point directly on the edge where the nickel layer ends. And then we have the copper underneath and then I will do the same multi-layer analysis. And this confirms our guess. We still have like four or five times nickel and then underneath we have already like 100% copper. The last question that remains is what material are the fins made of? Again, very thick nickel layer, again, 10 times just nickel detected. So I will just repeat it on the same spot to see if we can dig deeper. So again, same thing here. We had to just dig through the nickel layer and underneath we can find 100% copper. Last thing to test is the case. In the inside of the case, we have some numbers that are kind of like stamped into that indicate like manufacturing date and stuff. And this is a six. And I'm just going to fire on here and see if we can get through this layer, which looks like paint, not sure, and then see what we can find. So yeah, we have this auto selection of elements, which sometimes doesn't really make much sense. Like in this case, it shows a lot of silicon, which is definitely not the case. So it could be an element that is kind of next to it when it comes to like the specific weight. That would make sense, but I'm just going to repeat it again 10 times and see what we can find. I now manually went through the spectrum and told the device what to detect. Also added uh, oxygen, hydrogen and like um, carbon to it. And now it makes a lot more sense. Now you might maybe ask yourself the question, why would that now make sense? For this, I switched back to the normal microscope and scratched across the surface. And you can see those like round things like shapes right here. And then it's quite obvious that this is just a fiberglass reinforced polymer. And during uh, the material analysis, we probably just hit one of those, yeah, basically fiberglass particles, which mainly consist of silicon. And that just shows that you also have to correctly interpret what you're actually looking at. 
So to sum it up, I don't expect any kind of issues with the materials they selected. It was also easier than I expected to reassemble the entire thing with the gasket. And I will now also put it all together back on the motherboard at the 4900K, the deleted one. And then I want to see what kind of VRM temperature we can see under load. That looks quite nice, I have to say. By the way, just for fun, I also added the 8000 kit on here that we recently used for the Gigabyte review on the C790 board. Uh, which did not work. I also want to point out that this is not on the QVL list for this motherboard. But as you can see, it also didn't work on this motherboard. After half an hour of Cinebench R23, the VRM peaked out at about 52 degrees Celsius, while the CPU was constantly pulling about 350 to 370 Watt, which is definitely quite a bit. I think the VRM temperature is maybe like 2 to 3 degrees Celsius higher than what you would usually expect with a real water cooler, because this I mean, you can hook it up to your custom water cooling loop, but it's not the kind of water cooler I would personally expect from an $800 board, just openly speaking, because if you would make it nicely, you would just take like what you would usually do, take a piece of copper, mill out some grooves, and yeah, that's it. Not this mix of like aluminum base, then a sheet of copper on top, and then this like, which looks like half a, I don't know, air cooler with those fins. It's definitely usable. There is no concern when it comes to the materials. I'm not expecting any kind of corrosion issues. So ASUS definitely fixed this um, looking back to the C690, but it just could be higher quality. It's no problem to use, but with 800 euro, I would personally expect maybe a little bit more. And in the end, I mean, it's up to you to decide if you would ever even buy a board with this price tag. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.